Welcome to Sede Picante feeling awful, looking awful, but what else is new? Today I wanted to look at 40 propositions on the state of the church. And there's a, actually a really good reason why I wanted to look at this. I know a lot of my viewers don't really enjoy Michael Lopton, and there's a good reason for that too. Um, but when before I became a Sede, I think I could agree to the majority of everything in here. And it's just kind of like, take a, a step back and look. Look at all the souls that are going to be lost because of something like this. But this is someone actually writing out the parts that they don't say out loud. So let's go through this. And if I'm, I'm a little sick, so if I don't, if I'm not my normal jovial self, that's, I'm sick. Please, give me a break. Number one, I accept that Pope Francis is the successor of St. Peter who currently sits on this throne as the Bishop of Rome. He just throws it out there. Okay, I just accept this. I accept the sun is yellowish. <laughs> no evidence. No evidence required. I accept 21 ecumenical councils and adhere to their decisions as proposed by the living magisterium of the universal church. Which means he accepts one ecumenical council because the last one rejects the other 20. But you know. Uh, who's here to nitpick? I accept the Magisterium of Popes, or number three, I accept the Magisterium of Popes, blah, 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 and I adhere to their teachings with the appropriate level of assent required by the Magisterium, which is complete and total, by the way. Um, we're having some English tea with a lot of ice in it because it's warm. Number four, I accept that dogmas always retain the same meaning as when they were first defined. The Council of Florence called. They want you to get out of their church. Number five, I accept a hermeneutic of reform and continuity as expressed by Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, for the proper interpretation of magisterial teachings. This, the single most important one. And we're going to go over a, just a few paragraphs of that at the end. But this, number five, is everything for r and &R. Everything from Michael Lofton depends on this one line. This is why Ratzinger is the most evil, the most diabolical um, antipope that I've ever come across. Um, I don't, again, I don't study the antipopes because I don't want to. But um, Benedict the Sixteenth is the most dag nasty evil guy in the history of the world because he he pretends to be a good guy, but he's just gaslighting you. Number six, I accept the non-definitive teachings are to be given religious submission of intellect unless exceptions outlined by the Magisterium and Donum Veritatis are present. So a non-definitive teaching is like the teaching on limbo. That's about it. That That's like the only ones I can think of. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the other one I can think of is the qu choirs of angels 4, 5, and 6 are um, non-definitive. But that's tradition. So it's kind of hard to, uh, to balance that out. Number 7. I accept that when these exceptions are present, the suspension of assent and even a public expression of concern is conceivable. The public dissent is almost imprudent and can be often a grave sin. Right, remember, this is for non-definitive teachings like limbo. Somehow rejecting limbo can be a grave sin, but there's no definitive teaching on it. Like, what? what give me an example of a non-definitive teaching. That is not authoritative, by the way, and can be um, that can be submitted to, but there can be objections raised to it. Well, it can't be about faith, it can't be about morals, it can't be about law, and it can't be about discipline. So it has to be outside of that. And the, what happens after death is one of those areas, except for those parts where the church has has a. Why is there a bug on me? Except for those parts where the church has definitively said something. Um, and if I look like I'm drinking a lot, it's because I've a head cold, I think. Um, I ex number eight, I accept the Universal Magisterium's non-definitive teachings. Whatever this guy is smoking is insane. Like, non-definitive teaching. The, he just made up a new category of teaching. 
Universal Magisterium <coughs> is when all the believers. This isn't an ordinary Universal Magisterium either. This is just Universal Magisterium. It's when all the believers believe something. And I don't know what a disciplinary judgment of a universal belief of all Christians is. I don't even know what this is. So, like, because these, he's making up terms, and that's what they will do. Um, and then he says, oh, they're, they're theologically safe. Where in Vatican I does it say that the universal magisterium's non-definitive teachings, which are not binding and not specifically about faith and morals, which are actionable in your life, can be disciplinary in the first place. Like... Whether or not the the souls of infants unbaptized go to limbo and uh, maintain a perfect natural happiness, or I somehow make it into heaven, that's that has absolutely nothing to do with you or me and here on earth. Maybe that has something to do with the mom, but like this guy's like this guy's a dude. Like it's kind of sus. Number nine, I accept that I ought to be reluctant to attribute to. A re to attribute a reversal to the church's authentic magisterium in matters that are taught non why, why are we still talking about non-definitive? We have three in a row non-definitive? Let's see, how many times do we have in a row? Four in a row. And by the way, the next one's also on non-definitive. Uh, yeah, I'm re reluctant to attribute a reversal to the church's authentic magisterium on whether or not babies go to limbo or of the just or not. Simultaneously recognize there can be no full reversal in the substantial meanings of definitive teachings. There is no definitive teaching on limbo. There's very good reason to believe some things. Very well defended reasons, but there's no definitive with authority. There's no Pope's stamp of approval. As far as I know, I could be wrong about this. I'm not a theologian. I just do this as a hobby to annoy people. Number 10. Um, I agree that whenever I t say something, I have to read, clarify what I'm saying, even though I'm talking about non-definitive teachings. We can skip number 10, because it's pointless. Thanks, Michael Opton, for not even being able to proofread your own work. Number 11, I accept that the Magisterium has plenary authority over the rites and liturgies of the Church. No one disagrees with this. Provided the substance of the sacraments are untouched, which they were touched according to Sacrosanctum Concilium, it called for a revision of all the sacraments, and all the higher laws of God are maintained. Well, they weren't. So, I mean, if you're going to take this at face value, you would have to have the hermeneutic of continuity. See, everything, everything is, rests on the hermeneutic of continuity and harmony. That is the only infallible truth. That is literally the Holy Spirit for them. That is the only infallible truth they have. It's like sola scriptura. That without that hermeneutic, they have nothing. Take away sola scriptura from Protestantism. They're just cultural Christians. They have nothing. Number 12. I accept the correction of my superiors, save only on, of my superiors, save only those matters of which the apostles said we must obey God rather than men. I don't know what that has to do with anything. Well, some intensely recognizing the role of the magisterium and the role of my superiors informing my conscience about the laws of God. Again, this is one of these, like, uh, uh, I'd like to accept things, but, you know, whenever it personally offends my holiness. Oh. No, Bishop Sanborn shows up at my door and he says, Eh, Sadie Picante, delete your channel. I should delete the channel. That's just... And by the way, if you look at the bottom of my screen, I have uh, I Say Yes, My Lord there, because I was trying to tease someone with it, but I don't actually listen to uh, diabolical music from the Novus Ordo, just, just to let you know. I reject the uh, errors of those who have been seeking to cast off the yoke of Christ and his teaching. Number 13, wow. Great job. What's the point? Where's the dogmatic theology there? Oh, oh, you know, those those bishops who, who don't want to do the yoke of Christ. What's the yoke of Christ? The laws? You, can you be specific? It's like half of this already could be thrown out. This guy's a doofus. Like, people get mad at me. My dad gets mad at me for being like, oh, stop saying personal remarks about people. No, this guy doesn't have any brains between his ears. Who, who's this person who's rejecting to cast off the yoke of Christ and his teachings? Who is that, Michael? Oh, the people that don't subscribe to me. Oh, it's like, gosh, grow up. 
By the way, don't subscribe to me and don't like this video. There's always the best way to respond to other people over saying the same thing is say the opposite. Because you've all been like mentally brainwashed that, oh, there's a video, I like it, I must subscribe and cunt anyway. Okay. 14. <coughs> 14. I reject the errors of those who nullify scripture with the claim that the scriptures have been corrupted by an intermingling of God's word with human errors. This was settled a hundred years ago. This is a settled question. So, like, what's even the point of bringing it up? By the way, Michael often doesn't know the scriptures. If you ask him to explain and to go through a scripture, I don't know that he could without actually having to do a lot of study. Because, so first off, the scriptures are hard. Second off, he's not that smart. Fifteen. I reject the error of those who do not employ a hermic of continuity with the scriptures. In other words, the scriptures are fallible without the new and fallible principle of Benedict XVI's random offhand comment at some address to two of the bishops in 2005. Oh, I reject the error of those who ignore preconciliar magisterium. You mean the stuff that contradicts what you believe, but then you have the hermeneutic of continuity to to wrap yourself into a pretzel, therefore everything's okay? But at this point, we need to remember, right? This is actually held by people in the Novus Ordo Church, in the Novus Ordo religion. They believe, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, every time a remnant of arms says something, yeah, it's infallible. Oh, and then I got to take the hermeneutic continuity and add a little bit of socialism in. And even though it's against socialism, it still is good. Yeah, good way to go, guys. Number 17. I reject the error of those who create an absolute opposition between the definitive teachings of the preconciliar magisterium and the postconciliar magisterium. What about when they're directly in opposition to each other? Well, then I need the hermeneutic. See, the hermeneutic is everything. The hermeneutic is literally their God. A hermeneutic is just a pride. It's a symbol of pride for them. A hermeneutic means that anyone on the internet gets to tell you what, what the scriptures mean. That's what it means. Everything is the hermeneutic. Alright, 18. I reject the error of those who attempt to undermine the deposit of faith under the guise of doctrinal development. But it had already happened. You're 60 years late on this. Well, 58, but you know, who's counting? Number 19, I reject the error of those who sever discipline from doctrine to the extent that they propose disciplines are diametrically opposed to the doctrine and consequently create scandal. Uh, those who dissever discipline from doctrine to the extent that they propose disciplines that are diametrically opposed to the doctrine. Does this mean the Vatican II's teaching on marriage? Well, I mean, we're going to get to this. We'll go over this stuff. I wonder why I am frozen. Okay, number 20, I reject the error of those who wish to bless sin. It's like, okay, I mean, I reject people who aren't Catholics, uh, who are openly apostates, and I, I condemn them. Wow, man, I'm a saint. I'm so freaking holy. Wow. 21, I reject the error of those who say that ha -ha, outside of the sanctity of marriage are good and true expressions of love. Yeah, that's called, like, the basic church's teaching since the first century. Okay. You reject uh, the people who would, who have never, ever been Catholics. Okay. 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 22. I reject the error of those who undermine the sanctity of life from the moment of conception until natural death. Or until death. Um, you mean non-Catholics. Okay, good. Great job. I would like to say that he's in line with the Didache. 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 Or the Didache. Like, um... This is settled stuff. What, what's even the point of bringing it up? And, and look at it. He's just filling out. Look at it. I, I'm so good. I'm so amazing. I reject all this evil that everyone's rejected forever. The other people, they're not Catholics. You know, they have no right to the name of Catholic. They've never been Catholics. They're a bunch of yahoos doing nothing important with their lives. Just sending everything away. But I'm going to reject them. Because in 2023, I need to tell people that I accept the faith as it was written down 2,000 years ago. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because we're all confused. That's how confused we are. 23. I reject the error of those who create an opposition between God's love and the duty to call the sinner back to repentance. You don't even call other people back to repentance. You want this formal apology. Ooh. 
Excuse me. Oh, stop all the freaking time. Has Michael often ever apologized for anything without doubling down on just how amazing he is? Like when you watch his tattoo um, video, which I wouldn't suggest watching because it's a complete waste of eight minutes of your life. He doesn't even defend pr the position. He just goes, don't judge me. Oh, don't judge me. Oh, don't judge me. I'm Michael Lofton. Don't judge me. It's like, oh, man. I wish you, Michael Lofton, would just go away. You need to go away. But we, we need to make more fun of you. 24. I reject the error of those who assume the presence of invincible ignorance in everyone who is not a Catholic in such a way that they neglect the duty to call everyone to full communion with the church. Oh. I guess he just neglected, or he just rejected, JP2. Oh, well. Okay. He, he, he had said that JP2 was the Pope. Now he's rejected him. Okay. What he's trying to say is that the literal meaning of the Vatican II texts that he's referring to here was that um, everyone with reason should be a Catholic, but we can't say that because they're not Catholics, they don't have all these natural rights and all this stuff. That's what it says, well, you can't have both positions. You either have to say everyone has to be a Catholic or they don't. And so there's a certain error here that's... <coughs> oh, Vatican II is heresy. I mean, it's very simple. You, th this is fantastic, actually. Like, I reject the error of those who, who assume that other people don't have to be Catholic and they're invincibly ignorant. And that they don't have to become Catholic. But then I also affirm everyone's individual rights to religious liberty. Because I'm required to do that according to Vatican II. Okay. Okay. So Miss Square this circle. And you wonder why he's like losing his mind, becoming insane. And it's like all demonized and has all sorts of things wrong with him. Uh, I think it would be really normal to, to like completely entirely mauled. Like he's doing his big molder. And just lose your friggin' mind. Man. 25. I reject the error of those who assume the presence of mitigating circumstances. In the presence of someone who has committed a grave sin. In such a way that they neglect the call the sinner to repentance. What, what is up with him with calling people back to repentance? Like, like well, come on. His channel is about, like, pretending to do theology. And he's like, but I call you... I Oh, you to repentance. Was he a Protestant? Now he's like, and the Lord said, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I know he was a Protestant. He literally was a Protestant. And he lives in the Bible Belt. I think he lives in Louisiana. So it's like, oh. Well, he's letting the mask fall just a little bit. Oh, oh, here it is. I'm so happy for this. In 26. I reject the error, the heresy, that the people that hold the opposite of this are outside God's love, and I call them to repentance. I reject the error of those who assume non-Catholics are informal members of the Catholic Church in such a way that they maintain is not necessary to call them to formalize their member within the Church. There's a bunch of illegal immigrants in the Catholic Church, yes. They're called Protestants, like Michael Lofton. He's an illegal member of the Catholic Church. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, when Mysterious Corporis is talking about this, it's referring to people who are coming to faith, not who are in faith. Because a lot of times the documents are confusing. Because, like, even with Augustine on uh, the baptism of desire, they, they view the faith as a process that you mature in. So, in this rejection of non-Catholics or informal members of the church, the problem is, is that he's not identifying a growth, a natural growth, into the truth. He's just saying, oh no, they, because they're baptized, they're automatically members of our church. They just practice a different religion. So, they're, for, they're, for the practicing of a different religion is not an impediment to them being members of our church. The, the traditional understanding is it's in an active impediment. It it serves to prevent them from being truly united with the church and to truly or and truly being a part of the body of Christ. They're dead members, and they get tossed off at the end of time. But this is just more of this double speak from uh, Second Vatican Council. All right, twenty-seven, and I reject 
the new Protestant rebellion that has been festering, festering in the church and presents itself as a pious and spirit-led movement under the tradition of Kennedy Hall. I mean, uh, as has been, I mean, tradition. Oh, this is rich. Don't, don't you just love this with these, uh, these semi trads who just, who just, oh, oh, all the day long whenever anybody else makes, tries to make distinctions. And whenever they get to make distinctions, they make these wide sweeping, they completely miss everything distinctions. Like, I, I, I don't know if he's ever read anything from LaFette. LaFette's not perfect. Like, no one thinks LaFette is perfect. Except for Kennedy Hall, who's never apparently read LaFette. Oh, man, that guy. That guy. A new Protestant rebellion that has been festering in the church? You mean like Novus Ordo? Has he been to a no I, I, I thought he stopped attending Novus Ordo because it was too Protestant for him. And under the guise of tradition? Like, just, it, it's incredible. It's incredible. You can't really understand why someone... This is what I've said before, right? It's a Gnostic religion. The um, Novus Ordo cult is literally a Gnostic religion. If you're not one of the anointed ones, you don't get a say in it, and you don't know what it means. 28. I reject the error of those clergy who set themselves in opposition to the, the Holy See. A clergy can't. That would be an act of schism. They would be outside the church immediately. So, who are those clergy? This is like Father James Altman. Father James Altman. He is one. He's one of the very uh, biggest ones. Father Frank Pavone, is is he another one? So when when you have that, it's like uh, maybe um, there's a better way to say this because if if the Holy See says you're not a priest, you're not a priest. It doesn't matter anything else. They just turn you off. But it it is actually this one is probably the most sympathetic one you can get. I mean, even the Sedes could agree with this. But the say days, uh, you know, we actually take orders seriously. So, like, we actually have theology for this stuff instead of just, I condemn. Oh. Oh. <coughs> 28. I reject the error of those clergy who undergo. Oh, that, good gosh. No, please, no. Here we go again with this, like, long convoluted twisting myself in a pretzel modernist double talk silliness that he's talking about one person in particular but then he decided to not use that person's name and he's super angry about this one person who did one thing one th oh i'm gonna die and people take him seriously we need to end this man's career for the good of other people's souls 29 30 31 uh, 29 i reject the error of those clergy who undergo supplied grace ceremonies for any reason so mass is said Without the approval of a bishop, a wandering priest, right? Including but not limited to a supply of grace was not given to them at the time of their ordination in the Reformed right. A supply of grace not given to them at the time of their ordination in the Reformed right. What does that even mean? So these people weren't ordained in the Reformed right and they can't say the Reformed right mass or you say that the people who are in the Reformed Rite and say the Latin Mass without proper permission because they're not explicitly ordained in that right? How about just people with invalid orders? How about that? That's really simple. Instead of like this, at the time of their ordination now. Man, sacramental theology. Is, we don't even need that sacramental theology anymore. Just throw it out. <laughs> All right, number 30. I reject the error of those who say the sea is bacon or that the current Holy Father has lost the papacy. Okay. He just rejects, you know, uh, doctors of the church, canonized saints, the infallible teaching, ma several magisterial documents. Yeah, he just rejects it all. Balamine's fifth opinion. Yeah, he just, just rejects it. Uh, Francis de Sales. De Sales. I like de Sales better. Opinion that a, the person who is a pope must be a Catholic. You know, it just rejected. No, he looks like the pope, therefore he's the pope. I'm Michael Lawton. I reject anyone who says that if he looks like the Pope, he's not the Pope. If, if only the Pope dresses like that. I guess I've never seen a normal routine. 31. I reject the SSPX. There, do it in one second. 
Okay, I reject the error of those who break communion with the Holy See under the pretext of preserving sacred tradition. The Holy See cannot be um, removed from sacred tradition. So this is a nonsensical statement. Excuse me, by preserving the um, the whole... Come on, guy on a bike, you can do it. You can do it. Sorry, I get distracted by the window. By preserving tra sacred tradition, we preserve the Holy See. It does. It, you can't bifurcate it. You, there's no division here. Oh my goodness. Even even sometimes the SSPX are smarter than the RNR. This is like this is terrible. Thirty two. I reject the error of those who say the mad, the papacy or the College of Bishop has taught heresy in its magisterium, whether they're speaking definitively or non-definitively. Isn't this like one of the first ones you're supposed to say? I just don't I don't get it. what's the point of doing it now? It's like, oh by the way, I'm dunking on the SSPX and the CMRI. And then I'm gonna say, Oh, um be because I have uh the hierarchy and uh uh you're all dumb. Ah! I I just reject it. When Bishop Sanborn says something, I, I I a lay person who's not even a trained theologian will reject a bishop who is a trained theologian because I have authority and I'm a YouTube influencer. Ooh, a mommy! I make money on YouTube. Ah, this is where I stand. The Church of Lofton, Church of Lofton, Lofton is the Pope. Uh, Lofton is the Pope. Uh, the Church of Lofton. Uh, we should actually just write him a theme song at some point. And then we should like do 30 second clips of Lofton like saying something, mute it and just play the theme song over it and like put a little Pope hat on him. It would be much more fun. <clears throat> um, 33. I reject the error of those who ignore the living magisterium or the post conciliar magisterium because it's obviously all correct and everything they've ever done is, is entirely correct. By the way, he every single time I've ever heard him uh, talking about the magisterium, he also criticizes them. So, like, uh, let's pick a side. Either the magisterium's perfect or it's not perfect. And he's like, oh, it's definitely not perfect, but I accept it. So I hope everybody's starting to see that this whole thing is like a madhouse. It's really, like, insane. I reject the, number 33, I reject the air of those who ignore the living magisterium, the current one. Or the post conciliar magisterium. So John Paul II. Uh, Montini. You know. <laughs> a bunch of yahoos, man. These, um, uh, I reject their errors. Their false teachings. Um, the hermeneutic of continuity, which was invented, apparently. By, I don't know if it was invented in 2005. Or simply made popular. But, uh, like, what about the legionaries of Christ and Opus Dei? Like, <coughs> people seem to forget, just, just simply forget a lot of stuff. Number 34, I reject the error of those who say the living magisterium or, or the living magisterium of the universal church presently does or ever will intentionally deceive the faithful or oppose the deposit of faith. And this is the, this one is the whole reason I made this video. So, when Daddy Bergoglio is, like, openly doing things wrong, and Lofton, we've watched this plenty of times, even on this show, he just criticized him. I said, I wouldn't say that like that. I wouldn't do that. Wait, maybe, 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 maybe. And just hear, hear, hear me out. Maybe the iceberg is doing it because he's intentionally deceiving the faithful. Maybe the reason you have these criticisms is because he's intentionally deceiving the faithful. Like, maybe, maybe, just, just, just maybe, um, Montini, when he ended the Second Vatican Council, said, no, Second Vatican Ecumenical Council, that it wasn't extraordinary magisterium, despite the fact that being an ecumenical council makes it magisterium. In, in, in the extraordinary sense. Maybe when he said that, he, he wasn't, I mean, maybe he was deceiving the faithful because there's a contradiction in the terms used. Maybe, maybe. Can we, can we just get a maybe? Because, like, as, as long as you hold on to this, and I think even, um, <coughs> excuse me, this one here will keep people in the church. This one here. Just 34. Um, 32 is also big. 
But 34 is, is so big. People do not believe the Pope is capable of lying, lying to them. That's part of what is meant by the uni ordinary universal magisterium, the whole infallibility of Pastor Turnus. The Pope cannot lie to you. So they have to square the circle. Every time it sounds like he's lying to you. That's it. Yeah, but he's not really lying to me. And this one is the most important one in the, in the entire thing. If you could just change the, just this one, you could save thousands of souls. Just by convincing them that the popes are capable of lying to them on matters of faith, morals, discipline, law, etc. 35. The error of those who say the magisterium hates tradition or desires to eradicate faithful Catholics. Um, if you can't see that, you're literally blind, but you know. Let them who have eyes see, and those who have noses smell, and those who have mouths eat big burritos. 36. I reject the error of those who aid the enemies of the church. What's their error? That they do performing, that they publicly perform abominable acts, like mortal sins? By publicly slandering and bearing false witness against the leaders of the Catholic Church. Wouldn't it be an error by an enemy of the church who wrote, writes 40 um, points, which he can't defend by theology, in defense of the anti-church. Like, isn't this literally what he's doing? He slanders the church and bears false witness against the leaders of the church by promoting that, that he promotes that the post-conciliar popes aren't a bunch of evil yahoos. I reject number 37. I reject the error of those who criticize the church while offering no constructive solutions. Seriously? Seriously? So let's start at 37 again because this is, this is ridiculous. This is like so far gone from a normal person. At this point, like he's not only is he drinking the Kool-Aid, he took a bath in the Kool-Aid. He, he's now giving himself like a blood strip test to see how much of it is actually Kool-Aid. 37, I reject the errors of those who criticize the church while offering no constructive solutions to confusion in the church and making no effort to cover the nakedness of their fathers. Reference, of course, to Noah. But of course, you know, every time Lofton tries to use the Bible or refer to it, it's pretty laughable. So, like, you're allowed to criticize the church so long as you, like, have intelligent, like, uh, really smart things to say, um... Uh, people like what you say. They like and subscribe to you. Uh, uh, people tell you in the comments that like you're really smart, and if everyone listened to you, everything would be good. Like, why don't we just rewrite this one? I reject those who don't worship and love my hot takes. Yes. All right, and thirty-eight. I reject the error of rigor. The rigorists who offer the judgment of charity to the teachings of the magisterium. We already had the hermeneutic of continuity. Now we have the judgment of charity. Oh, the rigorous and the judgment of charity. If the um, teachings of the magisterium are protected by the church, uh, what do I need a judgment of charity for? Like, well, I know more than the Holy Ghost now. This is ridiculous. Ah. Oh, another one for the rigor, rigor, rig, 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 rigorous. 39. I reject the error of the rigorous who failed to show mercy to the sinner. Is he complaining again? Is he like upset that people go in his comments and say mean things to him? Like what is that supposed to be? 40. I reject the error of those who say non-Christians can in no way be members of the Catholic Church that subsists in the Catholic Church alone. Okay, that's literally not what Lumen Gentium says. So he just blasphemed uh, an ecumenical council. Yeah, yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. And that's, that's his 40. Have you noticed that he contradicts himself multiple times in the 40? Because he can't do proofreading. And because he doesn't need 40. He needs about 20. He could probably do this in 10, actually. But, but I guess it pads his video time. I mean, he did get a total of 16 minutes and 30 seconds on this. Wow. With a one minute. Oh, no, no, no. It was longer than a one minute 
part at the end. Wow. He had put a one minute and 30 second commercial to his own video to pad time. So here's uh, John the uh, 23rd receiving his cardinal hat from a mason. And this is from Gloria TV. That's the uh, website. Um, the website. Do, 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 the French president, Vincent Blanc. Gives the Cardinals hat in Paris, Paris, France, on 1953. Oh, okay, but 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 I'm I'm supposed to accept that this guy's a legit pope. Okay, okay, okay. So now let's let's go look at um the statement by Benedict XVI, and this whole thing could be read. It's actually very interesting. This is Joseph's Holiness Benedict, blah blah blah, on December 22nd, 2005. Now, I just want to look at a little bit towards the end. Again, this, this whole thing is a whole video in and of itself that I'm much too lazy to make today. Also, I'm too sick to make it. I'm, like, having to cut and cut out all my coughing out of this. It's, it's horrible. It's, it's terrible. The Second Vatican Council recognizing, this is a quote, uh, making its own essential principle of the modern state and the decree on religious freedom has recovered the deepest patrimony of the church. By so doing, she can be conscious of being in full harmony with the teachings of Jesus himself, as well as with the church of the martyrs of all time. I, 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 I never understand these superlatives added to nouns that don't make sense. Okay. The ancient church naturally prayed for the emperors and political leaders out of duty, while she prayed for the emperors, she refused to worship them and thereby rejected the religion, the, the religion of the state. But the church prays for all sinners, so there's no, there's no diff, there's no distinction to pray for rulers. They're just sinners that you pray for. Like, what's the point? You just pray more for them because you know them. <coughs> the martyrs of the early church died for their faith in that God, in that God who was revealed in Jesus Christ, and for this very reason, they also died for freedom of conscience. And the freedom to profess one's own faith. Yeah, yeah, that's why they died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's why they died. They didn't die for the truth. They died for natural rights. Excuse me. And, like, um... I don't know about you and blasphemy, but I don't enjoy reading blasphemy. But, you know, Benedict XVI just blasphemes whenever he wants to. Let's continue on. The Second Vatican Church... The Second Vatican Council, with its new definition of the relationship between faith of the church and a certain essential elements of modern thought, because modern thought is somewhat different from any thought of anywhere else. You know, you know. Got him, it's bad. <clears throat> Continuing on with the quote, has revealed or even corrected certain historical decisions, but this apparent discontinuity has actually preserved and deepened her innermost nature and true identity. So, this is one of these things that Benedict XVI does with this hermeneutic of continuity. Wow! And he rereads what's going on now into the past as if there hadn't been natural rights in the era before Augustine and Aquinas had even discussed rights. I mean, like, the church is not a huge fan of natural rights as is, even right now. And then well, all of a sudden we're just like, oh yes, they mar they died because they professed the freedom to profess one's own faith. Oh, oh. You know that that's a condemned proposition? But here was the one I wanted to get to because religious liberty and Benedict XVI just straight up says, oh yeah, the martyrs died to express the freedom to profess one's own faith. What a horrible blasphemy. By the way, the Pope's can't blaspheme publicly. Which means he's not the Pope. Oh, well, shoot, darn it. Is religious liberty good? By the way, it's physically impossible for this to happen. It is physically impossible for someone to be forced to change their religion because the will is controlled by the person. One can be suppressed illegitimately so that their conversion is illegitimate. But one cannot literally make you accept a new religion. That's just a categorical error. Your will is your own. This would, on, Only God can do that, and he would have to uncreate you to do that, because that's the way he made it. You know, just saying. Catechism of the Catholic Church. Oh, the fake Catholic Church. Fake Catechism. Fake Catholic Church. 2,106. 
Nobody may be forced to act against his convictions, nor is anyone to be restrained from acting in accordance with his with his conscience in religious matters. In pi private or in public alone, in association with others within due limits, this right is based on the very order of the a very nature of the natural person, whose dignity enables him to freely assent to the divine truth which transcends the temporal order. For this reason, it continues to exist even in those who do not live up to their obligation of seeking the truth and adhering to it. Mm -hmm. Can we count the errors in that? There's more than one, by the way. <clears throat> Pope Pius the Ninth Syllabus of Errors Condemned Proposition in the present day, it is no longer expedient that the Catholic religion should be held as the only religion of the state to the exclusion of all other forms of worship. Condemned proposition. Hence, it has been widely decided by law in, in some Catholic countries that persons coming to reside shall therein shall enjoy the public exercise of their own particular worship. Condemned proposition. Moreover, it is false that the civil liberty of every form of worship and the full power given to all of overtly and publicly manifesting any opinions whatsoever and thoughts can conduce more easily to corrupt the morals and minds of the people and to pro 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 propagate the past of indifferentism. There's also um, an interesting note that there's a, a... The primary and secondary ends of... or Yeah, ends of mar matrimony in the... Uh, non-catechism of the non-catholic church have been switched from the 1917 code of canon law yeah so to 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 summarize the video the thing that really bothers the rnr people is they don't believe the popes can lie therefore you're required to wiggle your way out of everything but they, they are manifest heretics that means Excuse me. They lie publicly, frequently, and openly. And you just have to see it. But they will still maintain an audience, people like Michael Lawton, and they will still maintain very much a sense of authority and of power. Because the Nova Sorda Church is a Gnostic religion that no one knows what it means, no one knows what it stands for. And that's why he can make all sorts of weird accusations in here. <coughs> And there's no absolutely no repercussions to this. So we should take a time off today to say Hail Mary for poor Michael Lofton before he throws his soul to hell. Because he's definitely on the path of perdition. And sorry for this video being like not very interesting. I'm not feeling well. And I thought I still needed to get a Wednesday upload in. But thank you for watching if you got this far.